I'm going to tell you how posture can save your life. Hey, I'm Dr. Stan Eckberg with Wellness for Life. And by subscribing to our channel, you will learn everything that you need to know to master true health. Today, I'm going to talk about posture. And a lot of kids learn growing up, their mom said, oh, stand up straight and don't slouch and all that. But what does that really have to do with anything? We do know that people who feel bad kind of look like this and people who feel good look more like this. Well, it does it reflect on how well the brain is working also. So one of the functions of the brain is to control the body. So we can see how stress manifests in the body. And here is what we would call a normal posture. So my arms are hanging straight, my shoulders are square, and my palms are facing in toward my body in a relaxed, normal uh, posture. If we look at it from the side, then you see that my head's on straight and my ear is approximately straight over the shoulder joint. That's in normal posture. When the neck is positioned like that, it can signal properly to the brain. But what you will see more often than not today is you'll see people's shoulders doing this and you see people's hand almost always facing more or less backwards. And this is actually a sign of a weakened frontal lobe because the job of the frontal lobe is to inhibit a stress response and to inhibit internal rotation and flexion. So when we have stress, when if we were in a fight, if we have a bear coming after us, or, or if we're attacked, then our body goes into a state of stress. And the first thing that your brain is going to do is to protect you. So you pull your shoulders up, you pull your shoulders forward, you bend your arms a little bit, and you activate your flexors and your internal rotators. So when you see people walking around like this, it's a sign of chronic stress. It's a form of stress. Their brain is not working as well as it should. Their frontal lobe is a little bit uh, depressed, if you will. The properly, when, when the brain works better, then it can inhibit these things and we get back into a full posture. If you think about an infant, an infant is born in a curled up fetal position. That's why it's called fetal position. And it's because their brain hasn't developed yet to inhibit this primary flexion. And the same thing happens to grandpa when they start going senile, the, when the brain gets more and more and more degenerated, now you start seeing that the posture goes more like this again. If someone has a stroke, then we get what's called a decorticate posture, where whatever part of the brain doesn't work to inhibit that, we get an extreme flexion and, in, and internal rotation. So all of these are little clues for you that you can look for. Look at yourself in the mirror. Don't cheat, just kind of get in the front of the mirror and relax and see what your hands are doing. If one hand is turned in and the other one is not, chances are, that you have one side of your brain is a little better, one side is a little stronger than the other one. And by working on your posture and by doing simple exercises, like you can check out my video on the three winged friends, which are postural exercises, you can actually do exercises to stimulate the signals that restore the posture, that restore the signaling and actually start building up that that frontal lobe again. And in doing that, it's not that just that you get better posture, but when your brain starts working better, when your frontal lobe gets some more activation, you can also start finding better balance between stress and relaxation. Most people are in a state of chronic stress. They have what's called sympathetic dominance. Sympathetic is a stress response. But in all cases of health, we want balance. So by doing postural exercises and by doing relaxation exercises like breathing, you help your body find balance 
And in doing that, you improve immune system, you improve digestion, you improve sleep, and on and on and on. That's what holism is. When you improve one thing, you improve them. They have done studies that show that for every inch of anterior head carriage, we increase the strain, and there's a direct correlation between anterior head carriage and disease, between anterior head carriage and mortality. So keep that in mind when you think about what we call, refer to as a Twitter neck, that Today, when they examine the necks, the cervical spines, and the curves of children, there is virtually no normal spines anymore. Even kids below five years old have started developing Twitter necks. And when we see, just look around. Look around at, in the stores, in public, anywhere you go, you will see people looking like this. And it is devastating. It is not just a nuisance, it's not just that they get socially isolated, that they don't develop any skills except this. It is truly devastating to their overall health. By subscribing and watching our future channels, you'll learn more about health and how all of these things interrelate. And then you can make a good example, you can start working on yourself, and then you can start sharing this and, and sharing with others. Thanks for watching.